To fulfill her duties as head of state, the Queen receives a payment from the government every January, known as the Civil List. This is to cover the cost of staff salaries and other expenses involved in running the royal household. The Civil List was traditionally fixed at the beginning of a monarch's reign and had to last for the duration. Until 20 years ago, it had never exceeded £500,000. But in 1969, the Duke of Edinburgh complained on an American television programme that the monarchy was in financial trouble. We had a small yacht which we had to sell, and uh, I should probably have to give up polo fairly soon, things like that. Inevitably, if, if, uh, if nothing happens, we shall either have to, uh, I don't know, we may have to move into smaller premises, who knows? <laughs> So in 1970, the Conservative Party doubled the civil list to just over £1 million a year. Then, in 1975, to keep up with inflation, the Wilson government index-linked the civil list to go up every year in line with prices. But the palace never liked this arrangement, as it led to critical headlines every spring when the increase was announced. So in 1990, almost unnoticed, Mrs Thatcher agreed a new deal. The Queen's civil list would jump from £5 million to nearly £8 million a year, and this would be fixed for the next 10 years. It was a tremendous palace coup. It was exactly what they wanted. I mean, the, the Queen and her courtiers have been lobbying Downing Street for several years for this, because they were sick of this continual criticism which the Crown faced every spring. Payments to the seven other members of the royal family on the civil list were also increased, bringing the total to just under £10 million. But despite the widespread belief that this is all the monarchy costs the nation, the true picture shows that the full cost is actually many times that amount. The civil list used to pay for nearly all the costs of the monarchy, but over this century, particularly since the war, a lot of charges have been transferred from the civil list and are now met by government departments. This has been done very, very quietly indeed. An early example of this process came in 1953, when the Ministry of Defence took on the running of the Royal Yacht Britannia, together with the Queen's flight. Britannia has a crew of 270 and is the second largest yacht in the world. It costs over £9 million a year to run. When Britannia was built, Parliament was told that the justification for the cost was that it could be used as a hospital ship in time of war. In fact, Britannia has never gone to war. In the Falklands War in 1982, we were told it couldn't go to the South Atlantic because it used the wrong type of fuel. This was quite untrue because HMS Hermes, the flagship, used identically the same sort of fuel and fought there with no difficulty at all. The Queen's flight was recently upgraded at a cost of £40 million. It now consists of three BAE-146 jets and two Westland helicopters. They have their own special air traffic control lanes, known as Purple Airways, to keep them well away from other traffic. The cost to the taxpayer? £6.7 million a year. Then there's the Royal Train. Not a train as such, but 12 different carriages that can be used in any combination. The Department of Transport took over its running costs in 1960. Today, they amount to around £2.3 million a year. Other costs which have been transferred from the civil list to various government departments include royal visits abroad and state visits to this country. But the upkeep of the palaces and other royal residences is the biggest bill of all. They cost the Department of the Environment 25 and a half million pounds a year. The monarch has been, I think, uh, fairly clever in um, passing these costs over to government departments. The public, the media, tend to concentrate on the civil list, which costs only about 10 million pounds a year. Much less is heard of all these other expenses met by government departments, which come to at least 46 million pounds a year. The result is that people think the monarchy doesn't cost that much. But £56 million still doesn't cover the total running cost of the British monarchy. The royal family derive additional income from the duchies of Lancaster and Cornwall. The duchy of Lancaster consists of valuable land in central London, 
including the site of the Savoy Hotel and 52,000 acres of farmland in the Midlands and the North. The Queen earns three million pounds a year from these lands. This money is known as her privy purse and it goes towards personal expenses, such as the upkeep of her private homes at Sandringham and Balmoral, her clothes and her charity subscriptions. By tradition, the revenues from the Duchy of Cornwall go to the heir to the throne. And last year, they topped three million pounds for the first time. The high level of public concern about the cost of the monarchy is fueled by the fact that the Queen is already believed to be the richest person in the country. Both Forbes and Fortune magazine, usually recognized as reliable authorities on the very wealthy, rank her fifth in the world and estimate her fortune at between five and seven billion pounds. But such estimates are almost certainly too high. You have to realize when talking about the Queen's wealth that there's a difference between her wealth as head of state and her private fortune. Uh, all these estimates that range from five billion to seven billion are concerned with her role as head of state. Uh, they include art treasures, the crown estates, royal stamp collections, all the furniture, Buckingham Palace, um, everything's rolled into those figures. And it's not really fair to say that, that those are hers uh, to sell and dispose of. But although these national treasures can't be considered to be part of the Queen's personal wealth, she does have extensive assets of her own. Her estate at Sandringham in Norfolk is her personal property and is valued at around £75 million. Balmoral Castle and Grounds would probably fetch another £40 million. She also has stables at West Ilsey in Berkshire and racehorses worth several million. And her personal jewellery collection has been valued at around £40 million. But it's extremely hard to ascertain the full extent of the Queen's personal fortune because of the secrecy surrounding it. 